Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Now I have a new series of three whiskies from the Perspective series, number one from Berry Brothers and Rudd. And this, these are blended scotch from 2019, all 43%. And they all um, combine the art of whiskey with the art of photography. So this is the 21 year old. I have here the 25 year old, which is going to be next. And after that, I have the <clears throat> 35 year old. I, not every day I can hold up a 35 year old and I do rare and exotic whiskeys. All right. So um, we have the photographer. We have Mr. Lindsay Robertson and he actually did. Uh, he took this picture here. So da 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 da. I'll talk about that in a second. Now, um, these bottles somehow are not flying off the shelves. Uh, 2019, it's two years ago, there were a total of 6,900 of these, 3,220 of the 25 year old, and 1,700 of the 35 year old. And they're basically not moving at the moment. People in Europe are reducing the prices so they can finally get this stock off their hands. Now, each and every um, bottle actually does come with a nice little photo a photograph here, yay, and a little story on the back. So here you have a picture of Lindsay Robertson. Um, I could be doing overlays, but I have the card here. It's a high, it's a glossy here. Um, so the first time I booked, I was I don't know which way is up and down, to be honest. It's like, oh, okay, it's actually this way. It's a beach and you have the waves and so on. And he wrote here, I'm just going to read a very basic thing. He said, um, this is Sandalwood Bay, or I'm sorry, Sandwood Bay, is in Sutherland, best known for its remote location, mile-long beach, and Ambalich, um, I don't know, a sea stack. Um, Buachili, okay. It takes around two hours to walk here from where the access road ends. I don't know if I'd walk two hours. I'd have a bike. Um... On approaching the beach from the grasslands, you are immediately hit by the soulful and beautiful peace ex exuded by the area. The location is nothing but magical and well worth the journey, even after carrying around 35 kilograms of camera equipment. That's a lot. All right, and this was very, very much done. Um, he spent the whole day there, was completely alone throughout. This was the last image of the day and one that challenged me the most, down to my last couple of sheets of film. So he's... It's not digital. It's real, real 35 millimeter. Wow. I knew what I wanted to capture and patient came, patience came into play as well. Waiting for that perfect moment and what seemed an eternity. I've eventually caught the wave. Um, yes, this was the wave he wanted. All right. So um, I should have actually put the whiskey in the glass. But beforehand, I wanted to show you something. I am not a big fan of wax caps. Of course, no dripping because that would be not allowed. Um, Maker's Mark make sure, of, make sure of that. And they actually put a nice little strip on this, just like Booker's and a lot of other bourbons do. And you can actually take off the wax. For Scotland, that's actually a little bit of an advantage here, to be honest. All right, so um, 21 years old, 95 euros, whiskey base 128071. And as I said, it's a blended scotch. So there is grain and there is malt in here. What percentage of which? Who knows? 6,300 bottles. All right, I'm going to pull out my white heather for the second time. And this is a 21 year old blended scotch as well. This has the signature of Billy Walker on it with a lot of Glen Allachy in it, apparently. Now this originally went for about 160 euros over here. So almost 50% more of the price. And um, now it's going over at 250. Why? Because it's 21 year old Billy Walker juice even though he's only had about three years to perfect this stuff. All right, this is 48%, this is 43%. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, no mention whatsoever about non-chill filtration, no mention whatsoever about natural coloring. Shh, what a shame, what a shame. Come on, Barry Brothers and Rudd, I think you could do that. At least put on here natural coloring. Yes, I do know that people at this price class want to put an ice cube in the whiskey sometimes. You don't have to say natural, um, non-chill filtered, but natural color would be good. If you're really coloring this, <clears throat> oh well, all right. So might be, might not be, I don't know. It doesn't say, so I have to assume you did. If you look at the color here, you do see the 43% um, and the 48% is a little bit darker here from White Heather. On the nose, 
It's very, very nice. It's subtle. It's a little bit of a quiet whiskey. It's a little bit of the citrus moment, a little bit of that pledge, a little bit of that furniture polish, a tiny little bit of oak in here. Um, but it doesn't seem to be a beautiful whiskey. It seems to be an okay whiskey. I've tried it in my German video, so I basically know what to expect unfortunately or fortunately. So um, if this was a beautiful whiskey, it would have flown off the shelves for this price. People would have bought it and would have been talking about it online. Unfortunately, somehow Berry Brothers and Rudd um, is flying under the radar so low that this whiskey hardly ever got on my radar at all. The main reason I actually looked at it the first time was I received an email from an online shop in the Netherlands and they had reduced the price by 20 to 30 percent. It was like, oh, this is interesting now. Uh, for the normal price, no, 30 percent off. Well, let's think about that a little bit. And so, um, yeah, that's the way it happened. All right, on the nose, this has much more fruit. This has much more flavor. This has much more richness. This has much more caramel. This has much more of almost everything. This is an old man's type of on my leather armchair type of drinking. And this is maybe the new metropolitan moment of being a little bit more um, um, blazing new trails. Let's say that in a very positive way. All right. Very good. Let's try this. Um, now, what do I want to say before I try this? There is maturation, which is additive maturation. That means wood add something to the spirit. Color, maybe. This is natural color. This is all wood color in here. And also there's sub subtractive um, maturation, which means the wood takes out some of the harshness, takes out some of the, um, the, the pepper, the... the the, the ginger, the little bit of that alcohol sharpness it gets rounded off. Yes, there is interactive maturation as well, but um, I was listening to a wonderful broad, a podcast. I wasn't podcasting. It was on YouTube, and it was from the Irish Whiskey Magazine. And there they had um, people from Pinot Ricard. They had people there from Diageo. They had people there from Teeling. They had people there from different big, big companies, and they started talking about cask maturation. And they said basically, and this was very, very interesting, they said um, in Ireland we use the cask and we get the cask from America or from Spain, basically, sherry or bourbon, and we use them the first fill, bourbon, second and third fill, and that's it. No one basically does fourth fill in Ireland, at least not anymore. Um, there was also Mr. S Noel Sweeney there, who used to work for um, Cooley and so on. And then also when it became part of Beam Centauri, also that was information there. Um, but they talked about the Scotch whiskey industry as well. And they said, we know from firsthand experience in Scotland, they sometimes use the cast four, five, or even six times. And I was just like, really? Now I heard it. And it's, um, <laughs> thank you very much, because I've always said these are Fort's Phil. Yes, I know Glenn Farkless used their sherry butts four times at least, um, but they are basically season cast in one, two, three, four. Um, and then I think that's it. Maybe there is a fifth, but um, actually um, people in the industry do know that sometimes, at least for grain whiskey, and there's probably a majority of grain in here, that some... Um, companies have, at least in the past, if they do it now, I don't know, use some of their um, their barrels more than three times on the Scottish, uh, let's just say on the European continent, even though they're American wood made from America, in America. All right, that's what I wanted to say here. And so I'm not really sure there's a single first fill anything in here. I'm not even sure there's a second fill anything in here. For my taste buds, there's third and fourth and maybe even who knows what else in here. Because after 21 years, there's more bite to this than many other whiskeys that I've had that are much, much, much younger. Cheers. There's a heat. Wow. Okay, it's almost gone. Um, there is a creaminess to this, which is nice. This is not a bad whiskey. This is an okay whiskey. 
If I had this blind and I did not know it was 21 years old, I would go, oh, look, okay. Oh, there is a little bit of age in here, maybe 14, maybe 16 years old, maybe 18 on a good day. Oh, it seems like it's a blend. There's some grain whiskey in here and just not single malt in my personal opinion. Um, okay, there's no smoke whatsoever, which is very, very good, no pee. And it's, uh, there's a little bit of wood, but not much. There's no bitter kite. Hey, I like that. So I'm going to give this whiskey basically a C to a C plus. Um, C blind, C plus because I know it's 21 years old and oh, I'm affected by what I think it is. I'm, I still believe the lie, older is better. I'm sorry. It's not true, but sometimes I do feel I have to give a 21-year-old um, okay whiskey a higher grade than a 14-year-old okay whiskey because it's 21 years old. You get my, my dilemma there sometimes. Um, as I said, it's okay. There is a grain. There's a metallic type of moment towards the end a little bit here. There's a... Um, the bitter kite is not perfectly mentioned. It's a little bit of a... Uh, like a walnut skin moment. Yeah. Um, it's okay. 43%. Who knows if it's non chilled filtered. Who knows if color is added. And it's uh, 95 euros. Hmm. Uh, to be very honest, any day of the week, I'd like to have the um, white heather instead. There's just so much more complexity, so much more fruit drivenness. There's just so much more going on here. This is, as I said, a tiny little bit of heat. And this is like, ooh. So a lot of transitions here. Mmm. More fruit, more wood, more flavor, more boom. Um, this is like an old man's whiskey for his armchair, and this is, as I said, for the new the new guard. This is blazing new trails here. Um, wow, wonderful, like. Mm -hmm. um, whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American. Uh, D plus for the value for money. I don't. I, 95 euros by a Glen Fackless 21. Sorry. Um, much better whiskey. Um, much more up my alley. Um, much more representative of what you can have. It gets very thin after that about the possibilities you have for 21 year old whiskeys um, under the 100 euro mark. Uh, every once in a while you can find something, but it's very rare. <laughs> so. Um, what suggestions do you have for 21-year-old good whiskeys at an affordable price, at an acceptable price, at a price that someone could pay if they really wanted to buy something that old? Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, tell others, and the other two whiskey um, videos will be coming where I compare the 21 to the 25, and then the next video will be the 25 to the 35. Yay! All right, all the best. Thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell others. Whiskey Jason here. Ciao.